Obviously, it was back and forth most of the second half and into overtime, I guess, ultimately, other than the final shot. What do you think was the key for you guys pulling out? You know, we've been um, four of our six road games, we've been either overtime, two buzzer beaters, and another overtime. It was just a matter of, you know, I, I thought the biggest difference was we got consecutive stops down the stretch, which we haven't been able to do in other road games. So, for the most part, I thought we defended really well down the stretch. Delgado is obviously a marked man. He throws different people at him, different looks at him. You counter with a lot of looks yourself. Talk about that challenge of, of getting him free, getting him one-on-one -on -one or isolation looks so he can score. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy, um, the attention he's getting right now. Um, I think he's doing a phenomenal job of working it inside out, kicking the basketball out, which I think is going to make it – I think guys are going to have a hard time deciding whether to come get him because he's really doing a good job passing the basketball. Uh, and he, he's just he's working extremely hard on on the rebounding. Um, he knows we need him, and he's doing a phenomenal job rebounding the ball. How do you manage his minutes? Are you get him breaks here and there. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the good thing about you know this time of year with TV TV timeouts are almost three minutes long. You get five, you get almost six of them in the second half. You play for four, you get three minutes off. Um, it, to me, it's managing his first half minutes, trying to only get him at the 15 to 16 range, but the second half, because of the extra timeout, for the most part, the way the way it is, you, you get a lot of rest in the second half. I mean, that's one reason why guys' bench gets shorter during conference play. It's just you get more timeouts. Obviously, there's still a ways to go in the season, but based on where you are, where Georgetown is in the standings and RPI, things like that, did it feel like some sort of a playing game also on some level, like to, just to have some advantage over them as we get um, closer? We needed a win, you know, and obviously, they had three great wins in a row. Um, I thought the Creighton game, they, they played as good as I've seen them play all year. And I thought at Butler, they played phenomenal. Um, you know, we have been playing good. We just, we just, been, we've been on the road. This is our sixth road game out of our 10, 10 games. So um, for us, it was just a matter of getting over the hump on the road. I knew we'd be close. I knew it was going to be a close game. It was just a matter of can we finally pull one out. You know, we made free throws, which we've struggled to do on the road, um, and we got stops. Kadeem Carrington seemed like he's been struggling the last few games, but really busted out of his uh, slump today. What, what do you do differently? You know what? We just um, I gave the I gave the six guys that played the most minutes after Xavier a day off on Thursday. It was a tough travel day on Thursday, uh, and then yesterday we just you know we spent extra time in the gym just kind of letting him see the ball go through the net. Uh, we did a lot of individual work with him just. Again, it's just a matter of sometimes you just got to see the ball go through the net. Uh, I thought he took good shots. I thought he was under control tonight. I thought he ball faked well. He got, you know, I thought he was more aggressive getting into the lane. And, you know, we got some free throws, which, you know, you see a free throw going in. It's the same thing as a jump shot. So um, it's just a matter of, you know, it's just a matter of time until Kadeem pops out. Could you explain to us down one for 19 on threes? What were some of the factors that went into that? I, we got a little lucky on Rodney a couple times, to be honest with you. Um, Especially in the first half, he got open a couple times, um, but you know, for the most part, we just wanted to shade him as much as possible. He's such a dynamic scorer. I thought we did a good job on their fade screens. Um, they do such a good job on their offense of getting to their third and fourth option, which puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, so for the most part, you know, we we did a good job. Even though sometimes we'll give up twos against them. Um, and we decided to give up some twos to take away maybe some threes, especially on the road. Did you expect Georgetown next to last possession to call timeout? Did you expect them to just attack them the way they did? You know what? I, I, I'm the, I'm the, I don't know John's philosophy, so I can't answer for John. What's your, what was your philosophy? Then? But mine was the same. I did the same thing. I let Kadeem Carrington go. You know, I think sometimes when you can have time to set up your defense, mm -hmm. you can't. Like you know, they called timeout. We went zone. So maybe he didn't want to call timeout because we went zone in before overtime. Um, you know, we went zone. Uh, he had went zone when I called timeout one time. Sometimes when you give, especially in this league, you give a chance for one of these coaches to kind of get their defense set. And it doesn't matter what you draw up. It's just, it's just hard to score. And, you know, Xavier did it to us Wednesday night. 
they get a we score a great bucket tied up at seventy and blew it dribbles down and they don't call time out we're scrambling a little bit and he gets a hits a fifteen foot or so when the defense is scramble especially when they make a shot sometimes it's an advantage coach kitty fouled out at the end of regulation uh, what'd you tell your team for the overtime period offensively do anything different no I mean we, we do get a little different um, we don't have as many pick and rolls for miles that we do for Kadeen it, it was just more or less just get the ball to Angel or Desi um, and let Desi you know Desi had a tough night but I thought he was aggressive I thought he got us um, he gave us offensive rebounding opportunities with his drives uh, and I thought Angel you know did a great job of just you know going inside to out he was gassed it, it was it was tough but you know, we found a way. There would seem to be some confusion with uh, a foul call on Jones at one point. I guess people thought he had five, and then they switched it. Was it? Did they get an explanation on that? They switched. They switched it. The foul call early in the second. Well, not really that early. Like eight minutes ago, they switched it to Powell thirteen, and I think that was confusion. I think we had him as four. Um, the book had him as four. I think that was. I don't think the. I don't think the scorekeeper had him as four. I think the scorekeeper had him as, as five. So, okay. um, but they did switch the foul call when they went to the monitor at like the eight minute mark when when Miles fell. In terms of Powell's weight loss, was that something that was initiated before you got him, or did you guys? No, we got Miles at a, at a nice round plump two forty. Right. <laughs> Miles is now two hundred. Yeah. He's done a phenomenal job um, with his body. He's done a phenomenal job. As a freshman in this league, playing you know, playing the minutes he's playing, he, he's going to be a really special player. With regards to LJ Peak, you've seen him obviously now in the league for a I've couple. Seen him years. too much. <laughs> well, how's it, how have you seen him develop, and what was the challenge? I, I to... think LJ's really. De- I always thought LJ was. You know, we always said he, you know he's a scorer, he's a scorer, he's a scorer. We'll load the box up when he drives because he's not passing it. And I think the difference is, I look at LJ Peak almost as a point guard now. The way he gets other guys' shots, um, the way he carries himself on the court, the way he talks to his teammates, um, he looks like a leader. He acts like a leader. Uh, I think he plays like it. I think he's developed into a, a, a really, really good high-level guard. Thanks, guys. Thanks.